Good morning, buenos dias, mi amigos. Okay, today uh, I'm going to talk about this video that an ounce, an ounce of salt per day shares with me. And we're going to look at it and examine it. And you'll have to, uh, I'll have to warn you, there's a, a guy across the street mowing an empty lot. He does that about three times a week. So I hope it's not too noisy. For the life of me, I don't know why somebody would mow an empty lot, but three times a week? Anyways. So what is the Millennial Kingdom, and should it be understood literally? Now, in the final book of the Bible, the book of Revelation, as it's called, there is a period of time referred to where Jesus Christ returns and then after he reigns on earth for a thousand years. Okay, there's hold on a second. Whoa. Alright. Wow. How anybody can make that statement is just beyond me. It's incredible. Just, uh, you know, real casual like just makes the complete Bible a complete lie and so now even specifically making Jesus Christ out to be a liar just just nonchalant casual like it's incredible let's go over that again time referred to where Jesus Christ returns and then after he reigns on earth for a thousand years that's incredible. Just nonchalant, real casual, like nullifying the entire Bible. One statement. All right, let's get into this. Yeah, and I'm telling you, this stuff should not be taken lightly. And the thing is, guys like this, they're the most popular, right? But they're not getting their teaching from the Bible. They're getting it. Te they're teaching from other people, and that's very obvious because there's nothing in the Bible that says Jesus Christ isn't reigning right now. There's nothing in the Bible that says Jesus Christ will reign a thousand years after his return. And we'll see what this guy says what happened if he if he even mentions what happens when Jesus stops raining right, I'd like to I'd like to hear that but let's make this very clear Matthew 24 Mark 13 Luke 21 Jesus is asked what is the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world now, this is I don't know why it's so hard for people to understand I think People don't want to understand the truth. I really do. I, I don't think they care about the truth at all. Because here, when Jesus is asked about the end of the world, it's very clear that at the end of the world, the sun shall be darkened, the moon shall not give her light, the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heaven shall be shaken, and Jesus will come in the clouds of heaven and all the tribes of the earth mourn. Men's hearts failing them for fear of what is coming upon the earth. Alright, and when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, he sends his angel, angels with the great sound of a trumpet and they shall gather together his elect. That's the end of the world. That's it. I mean, it's the end of the world. What part of the end of the world is so hard to understand? When it's the end of the world, it's the end of the world. So when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, it is the end of the world. There's not going to be any doubting about it. Everybody's going to know it's the end of the world. All right, so I mean, you can't get around it, man. This guy just nonchalant, casually says, "No, 
it's not the end of the world when Jesus comes. So you can continue with, uh, you know, gay sex or whatever after Jesus comes. No big deal. He just sort of comes and walks around and and where you know sits on a throne, I guess, and eats, you know, Kentucky Fried Chicken. And um, I, you know, I don't know what what in the world is going on in these guys' mind. I really don't. But Jesus Christ comes back and sits on his throne and eats Kentucky Fried Chicken for a thousand years, and then what disappears? I don't get it. Yeah, I don't. I really don't. It doesn't. This thing does not make any sense. Let's go to Luke, chapter one. Wow, the very first chapter of Luke. It's incredible. Speaking of Jesus, he shall reign over the house of Jacob. Do you know who Jacob is? Better calm down. Get too excited. He shall reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there shall be no end. Is that complicated? Is that hard to figure out? I mean, is there a problem here where people can't function? You know, their minds don't work, they can't think. Well, Reverend Bob, he says that Jesus reigns a thousand years. So, Bob's right, and the Bible's wrong. I mean, is that... I mean, come on, man, you can't... You, you would never be honest enough to admit that. There's a problem. If Bob says one thing, and the Bible says another thing, and they don't square up somebody's wrong you know that the, they could both be wrong <clears throat> right but I don't believe Bob at all and I believe the Bible is from God <clears throat> and I yeah. and I'm gonna take what the Bible says over Bob every single time guarantee it and then the Bible says he Jesus shall reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom there is no end, or there shall be no end. So there's no no possible way that Jesus could reign a thousand years. And it's not in the Bible anywhere at all. Alright, so this guy he says that the end of the world comes but it's not the end of the world and that Jesus begins to reign as if Jesus is not reigning right now and then at the end of the thousand years apparently he stops reigning and you know the implication is that unsaved people will still be here during the thousand years and you know I've heard all kinds of goofy goofy stuff uh, you know according to this doctrine that there's a thousand year period after Jesus returns like they're gonna go back to sacrificing animals and all kinds of goofy stuff that's not in the Bible anywhere what is in the Bible is the fact that Jesus reigns forever. You can either believe Reverend Bob or you can believe the Bible. Your choice, but one's right and the other's wrong. I guarantee it. Now in Matthew 13, isn't there a, something about a mystery or something? I don't know if you get, if you all like mystery, you know, mystery stuff. But he answered and said unto to them because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven but to them it is not given 
what Jesus is saying here is that it is given to you that believe in the Lord Jesus Christ those of us that are born of the Spirit of God the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven are given to us but to them that do not believe it is not given right and I've pointed this out several times and I will point it out several more times that when somebody does not believe there is a veil over their heart even unto this day when Moses is read the veil is upon their heart nevertheless when it shall turn to the Lord the veil shall be taken away right so when you are born of the Spirit of God the veil is taken away and now you can see the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven that doesn't mean you're gonna know everything right away but your eyes are open you ought to be able to see it now all you have to do is start looking start looking right in this verse also right here for this people's heart is waxed is um, wax grows and their ears are dull of hearing and their eyes they have closed lest at any time they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears and should understand with their heart and should be converted and I shall I should heal them but blessed are your eyes for they see and your ears for they hear now you understand this is the same thing right if you're able to connect the dots you got one dot here you got another dot there you just connect the dots and you realize man the, the Bible is not as complicated as you once might have thought I know that's the case for me when I started realizing hey that's the same thing here as it is over there all we, all we have to do is connect the dots right I mean this thing this is all throughout the Bible right um, you know this prophecy of Isaiah this is in the book of Isaiah we read this numerous times throughout the Bible right for verily I say unto you that many prophets and righteous men have desired to see those things which ye see and have not seen them and to hear those things which ye hear and have not heard them hear ye therefore the parable of the sower all right, and then he talks about um, you know the seed and where it's planted and if the if it's planted in firm soil it's going to spring up to everlasting life that means when you're born of the Spirit of God you will never die okay so this is not the parable that I wanted to get into but it's great man it's great right now let's get into oh, where are we at here oh here another parable excuse me oh, I went too far didn't I there we go okay another parable put he forth now this is not a contradiction to the parable that is right before it okay yeah that's important to understand it's not it, everything is lining up everything is consistent all throughout the Bible the key to understanding what the Bible says is faith if you believe the Bible that you hold in your hands is from God then your eyes are open and you'll be able to see just like what we read in 2 Corinthians 3 if you don't believe it the veil is on your heart right so if you believe it the veil is taken away now you're able to see another parable he put forth unto them saying the kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man which sowed good seed in his field 
But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat and went his way. And when the blade had sprung up and brought forth fruit, then appeared the tares also. So the servants of the householder came and said unto him, Sir, didst not thou sow good seed in thy field? From whence then has it tares? He said unto them, An enemy has done this. The servant said unto him, Wilt thou then that we go and gather them up? But he said, Nay, lest while, we, lest while ye gather up the tares, ye root up also the wheat with them. Let both grow together until the harvest and in the time of harvest I will say to the reapers gather ye together first the tares and bind them in bundles to burn but gather the wheat into my barn alright so this is I mean amazing it's so simple so simple if you were a farmer this would be easy peasy right easy sneezy you would understand this very simply you let them both grow together now the tares are a, is what is called as false wheat so as they grow that you can hardly if you're not a farmer you can't hardly tell the difference between a tear and a wheat now we have people like that today don't we it's very hard to tell the difference between a tear and a wheat. It's very hard to tell the difference between who is saved and who is not saved. Right, but when it comes harvest, which is the end of the world, uh, then it's going to be obvious, right? So also with the wheat and the tares. The wheat turns golden brown and the tares, their seeds turn black and become poisonous. Now let's scroll down a little, little bit. Just a little teeny weeny bit. Alright, then right here in verse 36, Then Jesus sent the multitude away, and went into the house, and his disciples came unto him, and saying, Declare unto us the parable of the tares of the field. And he answered and said unto them, He that soweth the good seed is the Son of Man. The field is the world. The good seed are the children of the kingdom. But the tares are the kingdom. I'm sorry. But the tares are the children of the wicked one. The enemy that sowed them is the devil. The harvest is is the end of the world and the reapers are the angels as therefore the tares are gathered and burned in the fire so shall it be in the end of this world the son of man shall send forth his angels and they shall gather out of his kingdom all things that offend and them which do iniquity and shall cast them into the furnace of fire there shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth. Then shall the righteous shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of their father. Who has ears to hear, let him hear. Now let's compare this with what we read in Matthew 24. Right? When Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven it is the end of the world remember he's asked what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world and when he comes in the clouds of heaven it is the end of the world and he sends his angels to gather together his elect right just as the parable of the wheat and the tares right so the wheat is gathered into his barn the tares are uh, put in bundles and burned. Right, so um, also let's go, let's do it this way. Remember what it says in First uh, Thessalonians 4. Uh, let's see. 
let's find out what it says here. Oops. All right. So, for the Lord Himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Now, this is at the end of the world, just like what we read in Matthew 24, with the sound of the trumpet, and angels gather together the elect. Right, and then so also in the parable here, at the end of the world, the children of God, the children of the kingdom, the good seed, is gathered into his barn. Right, so his barn is up in the air. Right, caught up to get when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven we are lifted up in the air we're lifted up in the air keep that in oh, we're not sitting here on the ground playing fiddlesticks or whatnot we're up in the air right we're up in the air. So when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, we are lifted up. And it says here, and he shall send his angels with the great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect. That is to say, we are lifted up into the air to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Now, there, there is no room for well, I'm going to sit here on my throne and eat Ken Kentucky Fried Chicken for a thousand years and then I'm going to take off. There's no room for that. Because when Jesus comes, it is the end of the world. There's no wiggle room there. When it's the end... It's the end. The only way to make this argument here is to say Jesus Christ is a liar. He's a bald-faced liar. Now, you can't trust Jesus. we got to trust this guy here to tell us what's going to happen. Now, I'd like, I'd like to be there when he explains to Jesus all this, how Jesus got it wrong. I mean, you think this is... <laughs> you think this is a new thing this is something that's been going on for a very very long time very long time surely your turning of things upside down shall be esteemed as the potter's clay for shall the work say of him that made it he made me not or shall the thing framed say of him that framed it he had no understanding so Jesus didn't understand you know, when he's when he was asked, "What shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world?" Jesus didn't. He didn't know. He didn't know he was supposed to come back, sit on a throne, and eat Kentucky Fried Chicken for a thousand years, and then just disappear. Yeah, you know, snap his finger, I guess, and disappear and stop raining. And Jesus, he, I, I bet he thinks he's reigning right now and forever and ever. But no. Mr. Conspiracy, he tells us that Jesus is wrong. He's wrong. Jesus is a bald-faced liar. I mean, really, if you're being honest about it, and you, you firmly believe, wholeheartedly believe, that what Jesus says here is not true, well, why not just call him a bald-faced liar? That's what you think. You think he's lying and didn't have any understanding. He did dumb. You know. Some dumb guy from a long time ago. You know, we've evolved. We've progressed into... We know, we got experts now that they didn't have... Jesus didn't have access to these experts like we do today. Jesus didn't have access to the... 
the, the wealth of knowledge that we have today. He just didn't know. Right? He didn't even own a pair of blue jeans, for crying out loud. And is that is that what, I mean, really? Is that where you want to be? Let's say, Jesus got it wrong. He doesn't know. That when he comes in the clouds of heaven, he, Jesus said it's the end of the world. Well, yeah, but people back then, they would tell little lies. Now we got experts here to tell us what the, you know, the, the reality, the truth is. And the truth is, Jesus Christ lied. And the truth is, when he comes back, it's not the end of the world. He's going to sit on a throne for a thousand years eating KFC. Getting so fat until he bursts and disappears, I guess. I don't know. I really don't. And, and what's really you know, offensive is to say, well, Jesus isn't reigning right now. Are you kidding? If Jesus doesn't reign in your life right now, well, if Jesus does not reign in your life right now, you know what that tells me? you're not saved and uh, you need to get saved right so does Jesus reign right now I mean didn't I just show you Luke chapter 1 verse 33 what's the best way to simplify this search here we could go here for sure we go there for sure if we suffer we shall also reign with him there is um oh no here I guess here I'll just do it this way I think in Revelation chapter 1 I think Let me think about this a second. I thought it said we reign. No. No, he's made us kings and priests unto God. Yeah. He He made us kings and priests unto God and his Father. So we are royalty. If we're a king right now, and that's what it says, and has made us kings right now and priests unto God we're called to preach the gospel to every creature right now we are royalty right now right now is there anything in the Bible that might support that well let's go take a look what do you say first Peter chapter 2 is there anything in here yeah you're chosen generation of royal priesthood we are at royalty right now for royalty right now why do why would we need to depend on the experts to tell us that Jesus is a bald-faced liar and what the truth really is I mean come on man do the experts have access to something that I don't well what do they know that I don't Exodus 19 he shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation These are the words which thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. We are the children of Israel. We that believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. We are God's people. Oh, but you say, no, that's replacement theology. The experts unanimously agree that the Christ-rejecting Jews are God's holy people. Well... I suppose if you never read the Bible, you might fall for that, man. You might. You might easily fall for that. If you never read the Bible and you only listen to what Reverend Bobby says, or Reverend Smitty, or, you know, whoever, John Hagee, right? If you only listen to those guys and you never read the Bible, you might fall for that stuff. And first Peter chapter 2 you are a chosen generation a royal priesthood and holy nation 
which in time past were not a people, but are now the people of God. If we are now the people of God, if we are now the holy nation and the royal priesthood, then we are now the children of Israel. I mean, if you never, ever, ever read your Bible, you might fall for that. And I guarantee you there are people who themselves don't read the Bible and are preaching things that they don't know about. And of course, people are listening to them and not reading their Bible and they're falling for what other men say and not believing what the Bible actually says. Galatians chapter 3 Now to Abraham and a seed were the promises made he saith not into seeds as of many but as of one into thy seed which is Christ. Now think about that. The promise was to Abraham and his seed. He saith not into seeds as of many are you thinking? Are you soaking this in? But as of one and to thy seed, which is Christ. And if you be Christ, then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. We are the children of Israel. We are the seed of Abraham. We are heirs according to the promise. We are the chosen generation. We are a royal priesthood and holy nation. So it's quite obvious we are the children of Israel. should be no doubting about it. These are the words which thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. See they are a kingdom of priests and holy nation. We are a royal priesthood and holy nation. Revelation chapter 1, he has made us kings and priests unto God and his father. And now let's go to Revelation 20. And I saw thrones. That's not Jesus sitting on a throne eating KFC for a thousand years. That's us. We are the kings. We are the ones that are sitting on heavenly thrones. And they sat upon them. And judgment was given unto them. So, once you're saved, you're saved forever. You're stuck in eternal life. You can't get out. The judgment has already been given to you. Sorry, Charlie, you can't get out. There is no way, Jose, to get out. You're stuck, Chuck. You cannot get out. Judgment has already been made for you. You're saved, sealed, secured, sanctified forever. You can't escape it. The judgment has already been given to you. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads, and they were in their hands when they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. Now, these are the things that are happening during this thousand year period. Alright, so let's go back and think about what this guy says. He says that uh, Jesus comes back and then there's a thousand year period. Alright, so after Jesus comes back people are getting their head cut off. People are worshipping the beast. So when Jesus comes back it's not the end of the world. I know. I know what you're thinking. 
I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, oh no, no, it's going to be perfect peace. It's going to be peaceful for a thousand years. It's going to be just absolutely wonderful. And, you know, it's, I guess all this happened before, before Jesus. And it's not, it's not indicated anywhere. But let's go even just with that thought. Even just with that thought. This idea that, well, there's going to be a thousand years of peace. So when Jesus comes back, um, it's not the end of the world. Jesus, he just told us an outright lie. It's not the end of the world. But there will be a thousand years of peace. Where there will be no sin, I guess. Nobody will sin. You'll have unsaved people. Is that what you're pointing? Unsaved people having gay sex? I, I don't know what's going on here. How can you say that people are still having sex, yet not committing sin? Alright, I mean, it doesn't make it easy. I can't even hardly be honest about this and try to take this stuff serious. I mean, I've considered it. Now think about this. In the resurrection, when is the resurrection? Well, the resurrection is when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven. When Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, we are lifted up in the air. At first the dead in Christ, then those of us which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be. With the Lord. telling you that guy's mowing grass does not need mowing. Whatever. Whatever. Who cares? Alright. So. Why? Wow, this is kind of odd. Okay. Who cares? So. <laughs> when Jesus returns, it's the end of the world. He gathers up his elect, this is the harvest, the end of the world, the tares are gathered and burned. Well, why is that so complicated? Right, behold, he comes with clouds, and every eye shall see him, and they also which pierce him, and all the kindreds of the earth shall well because of him. There's not going to be any mistake. This right here is a, is a direct contradiction to the movie Left Behind. I'm telling you, this guy, you can't tell what, what he's mowed. But you know what? I should turn my camera on. Uh, yeah. I mean, you can barely tell. There's a line there where he drove over. I wonder if he's getting paid by the government to mow that lot. Anyways, who cares? You, you see what I'm showing you here, right? When he comes in the clouds of heaven, every eye shall see him. They will mourn and wail because of him. Men's hearts failing them for fear. You're not getting that from the movie Left Behind. In Revelation 20, but the rest of the dead live not again until a thousand years are finished. I mean, wow. The rest of the 
They live not again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. I, I, I try to think what other people think, and it's too hard. It's way too hard. The rest of the dead. Alright, so who... So in your theory... The... The people that... Got their heads cut off are the only ones that got resurrected. And they are the first resurrection. Alright, so again, you're making Jesus Christ out to be a liar. Well, why would you even consider that doctrine if you didn't have absolute hatred for the Lord Jesus Christ? Yeah, what are you saying? He didn't die? I mean, isn't there a Bible verse? Who is a liar but him that denied? Am I... Who is a liar but him that denieth that Jesus is the Christ? He's the Antichrist that denies the Father and the Son. That's not the verse I'm thinking of. Um, I might have to go back and revisit that. Isn't there something about denying the resurrection of Jesus Christ? I don't know. I guess I'll think about it. This guy over here across the street is just driving me nuts, man. Ah, uh, that's not his fault. That's not his fault. Alright, so. Uh, Alright, so back, back here. So you're saying that like, like the first resurrection are these people that got beheaded. It's not Jesus. Uh, to hell with what the Bible says. You gotta listen to Reverend Bob, Reverend Spinney. But you know what? I'm gonna go with what the Bible says. First Corinthians fifteen. First Corinthians fifteen. First Corinthians. 15 verse 20 but now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruit to them that slept <laughs> wow so the people that got their heads cut off they're not the first resurrection are they right they, uh, they're not but who people that get walking around like zombies they're the they're the Lord and Savior of the world is that what? Is that the doctor you're pushing? The zombies with no heads walking around? Uh, what's going on here, man? I mean, I wonder, really, do people just say to hell with what the Bible says? Do they even care to read the Bible anymore? I'm reading this and I'm thinking, wow, how could you miss this? For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made be alive. But every man in his own order, Christ the first fruits, after they that are Christ at his coming. Let me read that again. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. But every man in his own order, Christ, the first fruits, afterward, they that are Christ at his coming. Then comes the end. When he have when he shall have delivered up the kingdom to God, even the Father, when he shall have put down all rule and all authority and power for he must reign till he has put 
his enemies under his feet. The last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. The last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. And this is great, right? This is amazing stuff. Absolutely amazing stuff. Right? So, let's... It's incredible. It really is. It, it, and maybe I'm being too hard. Really. I, I've got to be considerate. But, you know, let me just say, don't. Just say something you don't know. And don't just repeat something... They heard somebody else say, confirm everything. In Genesis 3, verse 16, or 15, excuse me, and I'll put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed, and it shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. He must reign till he has put all enemies under his feet. Now let's go to Revelation 20. And fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them all. Are you able to make the connection here? He must reign till he has put all enemies under his feet. Genesis 3. It shall bruise thy head and thou shalt bruise his heel. For he must reign till he has put all enemies under his feet. Alright, so this is the same thing, man. This is the end of the world, right here. <laughs> then comes the end. It's as clear as can be. Every man in his own order, Christ the first fruits. Afterward, they that are Christ at his coming, when he comes in the clouds of heaven, we are lifted up in the air. And we are changed in a moment of time, in a, in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye. We are changed. Transformed from our glorified bodies into our, or changed from our corruptible bodies into our incorruptible bodies. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, the last trump for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed for this corruptible must put on incorruption and this mortal must put on immortality so when this corruptible shall put on incorruption and this mortal shall put on immortality then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written death is swallowed up in victory O oh, death where is thy sting O oh, grave where is thy victory Alright, so, I mean, this is amazing stuff. Yeah, you, it really, I, to me, it's like, man, have you ever read this stuff? Because what you teach and what this says does not line up, man. It does not line up at all. So you got Jesus coming in the clouds of heaven. What you say is, yeah, it's not the end of the world. Jesus told a little fib there. He did fibbing. And uh, he's going to, he's not reigning now, but he'll reign when he comes. And he'll, he'll come, you know, sit on his throne. And uh, what, we're at in uh, uh, Vatican City or something, I, I'm not sure where. Vatican City or Jerusalem or somewhere over there. And uh, he'll sit on his throne and. He'll eat KFC for a thousand years. And then, that's it. He done reigning. So he's not reigning now. He's going to come and reign for a thousand years. And then he's going to go away. And never reign again. Now wait. Now, maybe when the Bible talks about this idea of, uh, G, of uh, you know, Christ, the Savior, coming and sitting on a throne 
and reigning for a thousand years. Maybe the Bible's talking about you. Maybe you're the Christ. Maybe you're the chosen one. Huh? Is that what uh, flatters you? I mean, really. Uh, what's going on in your head, man? You're saying Jesus doesn't reign now? You're claiming Jesus doesn't reign forever? Uh, who takes over when he's done reigning? Maybe that's you. Maybe Jesus, as a UFO alien, comes in from outer space, sits on his UFO throne, eats KFC, and then takes off after a thousand years. Maybe he leaves, you know, maybe he leaves the UFO throne machine, and you get to sit on it. I mean, really, man, really, you know, I say all this, I didn't even get a minute into this guy's video, just because that very first thing that he said. Let's go back and revisit it. Book of Revelation, as it's called. There is a period of time referred to where Jesus Christ returns and then after he reigns on earth for a thousand years. That's not in the Bible. That's not in the Bible anywhere at all. Again, you know, doesn't matter. Points this out a thousand times. I'll, you know, I'll continue to point this out. Right now, we live and reign with Christ right now. Right, and the rest of the dead live not again until a thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. Jesus is the first resurrection. We are partakers of his resurrection, just like what we read in 1 Corinthians 15. Every man in his own order. Christ the first fruits. Come on. Blessed and holy is he that has part in the first resurrection. That's us. Those of us that are saved. Those of us that are the children of God. We are blessed and holy because we have part in his resurrection. We are born of the Spirit of God. He dwells in us and we dwell in him. Blessed and holy is he that has part in the first resurrection. His resurrection. Not, not ours. That's for dang sure. And not zombies with their heads cut off. That's for darn sure. On such... The second death has no power. Did you hear that? Did you read that? Did you see that? Blessed and holy is he that has part in the first resurrection. On such, the second death has no power. But they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. What, why, why a thousand years? Well, this is from the time that Jesus made the kingdom of God available to whosoever believes in him to the time of his return that he promised. He promised a return for us. It's a very unique time period. Come on, man. I wonder, does anybody even read the Bible? This to me seems so simple, man. I can understand, you know, somebody that's new. I can. I, I do. I get it because it took me a while to see all this stuff. But, you know, once I started trusting the Bible, it started to open up to me. So I understand, I get it, there's a, you know, a new believer, um, you know, it's going to take time to see these things, right? But if you're a man of God, or claim to be a man of God, sitting on behind a pulpit, preaching to the world, or even somebody that's doing YouTube videos, presenting things as if it was the truth. I mean, I just don't know how you don't know these things, man. I really don't. I don't know how you... I don't know how you missed it, man. I really don't. I don't know how you read this stuff. Believing what you believe. Here, let's just do it this way. I forget what it says, but it says something here. 
Oh, let's find out. Let's go somewhere. Right there it is, 26. Uh, Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection. Well, wait a second. I, I thought these guys are claiming that uh, people with their heads cut off walking around like zombies. I thought, I thought they were saying they're the resurrection. Well, Jesus right here says I'm the resurrection. So who is it? Who's lying? Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believest thou this? She said unto him, Yeah, Lord, I believe that thou art the Christ, the Son of God, which should come in, or should which should come into the world. Now, think about this, man. Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. Blessed and holy is he that has part in the first resurrection. On such the second death has no power. How are you unable to connect the dot there? Whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. On such the second death has no power. Believest thou this? And you know what? If you're teaching this goofy stuff here, I, what you're basically saying is you don't believe it. You don't believe in Jesus. You don't believe what he says. You don't believe he is the resurrection and the life. You don't believe any of that. That's what that says to me. When you say Jesus doesn't reign right now, but he's going to reign in the future for a thousand years. And then stop reigning forever and ever. And you can wish it all you want, but that will not be your opportunity there will never be an opportunity for you to take over the throne of God. Never going to happen. Well, anyways, this is long enough here. I want to make a long one. And I want to make one a thoughtful uh, video this morning just to get maybe somebody to think about what it is that the Bible says and to think about what it is that you believe. All right, and again, I want to go back to and thanking an ounce of salt per day for sharing that video. Uh, you know, if you're familiar with me, I'm, it's quite common for me to, um, you know, to check out a video and then to stop at the moment something false is said. <clears throat> Excuse me. So we got 49 seconds into this video. I don't think that's a record, but it's close. And quite often you'll see these guys right off the bat they'll start with a false premise that's I mean if this is not true then you forget about the rest of what they're saying I mean really you're basing everything you're gonna say off of a false premise that's no good that's no good at all anyways that's it for me have a good day y'all